Baldi, tocco di Baldi. Giuliano non, non capisce bene che cosa deve accadere, arriva Giacinti a cercare di prendere questo pallone e Baldi. I've seen enough, just get out of here. Can people stop calling this series for the win? Because it's called FTW. It says in the intro that it's football this week. As it says on the tin, this is the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer over the course of the last seven days. And I'm sorry, but it's still international break. I know. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not friendlies. It's the UEFA Nations Intertoto National Global Tournament West, which England are now out of. And that's thanks to a 2-0 defeat to the hands of Belgium, thanks to goals from Yuri Tielemans and Juris Mertens. Southgate, you're a schlong. It's all going wrong. Football's on the ropes again. I've simply had enough of this man. I am done with this truffle Tony Mowbray. This foie gras Phil Brown. Just because you're fancy, mate, doesn't mean you're keeping the job. If you think about it, we should have known from the start. There's not even any sort of efficiency to wearing a waistcoat. There's no sleeves. It doesn't even keep your arms warm. We've appointed a man with complete disregard for half of his own limbs. We've got his England managerial highlights here in a lovely compilation. We did at least see somewhat of a Jack Grealish masterclass during this international break. This flick was more saucy than the Tesco condiment aisle. And I'm sure we're likely to see Gareth Southgate comments that actually divert to Connor Car Wait, hang on a second. He's actually praised Jack Grealish. What sort of twisted fantasy and universe are we living in? Ah, wait, no. If we zoom in on the small print, yeah, he's, yeah it's the under 23s. In true Gareth Southgate fashion, he was quick to provide the praise for Mason Mount. Anyways, Mason Mount, but he can't replicate Mertens. I'm not being funny. The man's launched it into the stratosphere. How are you applauding him for this? A one-legged Mason Mount gets in the England side whilst Gazza is manager. I'm sorry, Mason. I don't know how to tell you this, but we couldn't save the limb. Get him in the starting 11. As I always say, listen, the memories of the 2018 World Cup will never be forgotten. And Gareth Southgate is part of the reason as to why. But for crying out loud, I don't need to see Calvin Phillips, Eric Dyer, and Declan Rice in the same starting 11 anymore. But at least it's not as bad here as it is for the German national team as they were absolutely duppied 6-0 by Spain part thanks to a Torres hat-trick. No, they don't need to have a heart attack lad. A Ferran, not Fernando. Germany are actually washed. No offence to Spain, they're still a very good team. But this isn't the Euros World Cup winning Spanish side. Germany quite frankly are in Spain, but the S is silent. You get it as well, because like... Pain, am I right? This tweet saying the Spanish lineup was sh and that they'd probably lose 6 0 could have aged slightly better. It was actual abuse. I, I will have to call the RSPCA. It was so bad that Manuel Neuer was physically taking it out on his own goalpost. Damn it, man. Why must you be so big to let the ball in? Joachim Love is officially a fraud. Take your finger out of your ass, literally, in, in this guy's case. And Tony Kroos can't even blame this catastrophic performance on an over exuberant celebration. He didn't even score in it. I, I saw Serge Gnabry put one whole spoon's worth of sugar in his tea and it just threw me off for the whole game. Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, I'm sure, was watching, feet up, enjoying the moment. Surely this is the end of the manager. He's lost the dressing room. How do you even lose the dressing room when you're only in it for national games like four times a year? Elsewhere on international duty and Kazakhstan lit up their fixture with this outrageous halfway line goal. There's been a corona outbreak in the Norwegian national side and it's meant that the Norwegian FA have had to put together an entirely new 23-man squad made up of only foreign players. One player who's been called up to save the day is Toulouse's Ruben Gabrielsson and he tweeted out this video earlier. After a second nil-nil draw in a row, San Marino have created their own little piece of history. It's the first time they've avoided defeat twice on the bounce in competitive games. It's very impressive for a side whose backup left back doesn't even know what a circle is. There were tears at full time, but there was very much a scare along the way. This game's fucking mega. Cool, what a tackle. Look at this save. Fucking what a save, boy. 
class. Meanwhile, the African Cup of Nations qualifying this week produced some outstanding moments. First of all, we've got a probable Pushkas award contender from Riyad Mahrez for Algeria after this ridiculous touch. In a game between Ghana and Sudan, one of the fourth officials tried to literally attack a coach on the touchline, shoving him to the ground. We've got this slightly interesting tactic in getting past the defender. It, if VAR was, I think that's a slight handball to be honest. And Nigeria blew a 4-0 lead against Sierra Leone to draw 4-4. Are you telling me I've got two nationalities and both of them are absolutely shite at football? These are the 11 most fraudulent Nigerians in all history. And that says a lot with our track record. Who even plays for Sierra Leone? I give up, man, for crying out loud. Back in the UK, and it's fair to say that international games have had a slight negative impact on Liverpool. We literally don't have a fit squad anymore. Have you got two legs? Then you're fully qualified to play for Liverpool Football Club. Andy Robertson got injured for Scotland. Jordan Henderson went off with a slight issue for England. Added to Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk, Joe Gomez, Fabinho, Thiago. Now Reese Williams is injured. Even the youngsters can't stay fit. If we take a look at this hospital admissions graph, you can see here is the point at which Liverpool started their season. The A&E departments on Merseyside are going to be an absolute scene. At least Mo Salah's having a nice time, you know, at a family member's wedding whilst he's got a little bit of a break from domestic activity. This is impossible. I can't wait to see the starting 11 for the game against Leicester. We're going to need a little bit of filler to make up for it, I think, at this rate. Corny, Mona, all the kitchen team, Carol, Caroline, Kevin, Martin. Jeannie Vijnaldum got left hanging mercilessly by Memphis Depay on Dutch international duty. So he's probably going to miss the game just by pure embarrassment. We are actually going to have to rely on James Milner being able to play absolutely everywhere at this rate. Elsewhere, and given Mesa Ozil isn't registered for Premier League action, he's entertaining himself in a different way with this absolutely beautiful tweet over the week. It's a sh Housery award for the Arsenal midfielder. Chelsea youngster Billy Gilmore seems to be having some fun <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile we've got the derby to end all derbies on fifa pro clubs with blm versus edl facing off in el racico one of the strangest stories this week though is that fifth tier side national league representatives wrexham have been bought by hollywood acting stars ryan reynolds and rob McElhenney. How has this happened? How has Deadpool bought Wrexham? What is 2020? Do they even know what they've got themselves in for? This has got all the old marks of an absolute classic underneath the floodlights. At least the next set of Marvel superhero films are gonna have a different plot. Now, one news presenter from Ghana has been going viral on Twitter this week, and that's for his pronunciations of football clubs whilst giving the score results. I'll let him take it away. English. Premier League. F1 1, Manchester United 3. Where's Bruce? Which? Nil. Tottenham out for space. One. A, a strong vi village. Not only does he seem to be struggling with English pronunciations, the Italian ones are flying over his head as well. <laughs> Two. Some. Meanwhile, as Piliqueta seems to be the toughest of them all. Casa. As it could be. Juventus midfielder Weston McKenney had a slightly uncomfortable moment stubbing his toe during an interview. From Yahoo. Thanks, Michael. Weston, just to piggyback on Charlie's... Meanwhile, after Derby manager Philip Koku was sacked by the club with them sitting bottom of the table, it now means that Wayne Rooney is the caretaker manager whilst also being a player there. It looks like he's got his team talk sorted and ready to go already. After one fan asked Russian club Spartak Moscow to take Harry Maguire and Daniel James for free, the admin for the side made it very clear as to their transfer intentions. It's a shithousery award for them. There's the quite outstanding news that Barnsley have made a formal inquiry into the signing of free agent Mario Balotelli. Balotelli, Adeboyeja! This is the biggest culture clash of all time. How is Mario Balotelli gonna sign for Barnsley? Does he even know what a Barnsley is? Hello all and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty.
duty. And that concludes the beautiful game. A new series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here has now started over in the UK. And one of its contestants, radio star Jordan North, was trying to get back into his happy place before a bush took a trial to distract himself. His happy place happened to be Burnley Stadium Turf Moor. One journalist went out onto the streets to see whether it really was the happiest of places. And this was the result. Sorry to bother you. Can we just ask you how happy you're feeling right now? I'm bloody miserable, actually. Bums are shut. What do you expect? During the course of the last week, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson's new press officer appeared to accidentally tweet out a picture of none other than Tony Pulis with absolutely no provocation whatsoever. Seems like she's already getting prepared to be extremely defensive. Over in the Ghanaian Premier Division, and a goalkeeper managed to score a last gasp free kick to grab a vital result for his side. Tensions began to rise over in the Welsh Premier League. <laughs> And one footballing forfeit went even better than expected. <laughs> Now that it's time for still at nil nil, and you guys know the score by now, this is the segment of the show where I bring to you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And the best thing about Sunday League football is it's so accessible. You can just rock up in a park and watch whatever you like. However, sometimes it being so open has its drawbacks. Just ask this goalkeeper. <laughs> Why did I not just pick up croquet like my mum said I should? On to the weird stuff though now. First of all, we've got a commentator for non-league side Geisley getting caught out by the oldest trick in the book. My colleague is typing this and just wondered if you could give a, a shout out to my brother, Phil McCracken. Uh, kind regards, Carl. You did not just that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Oh, I get it now. <laughs> Over in the Brazilian Serie C and late into one match, a goalkeeper went down asking for some kind of treatment. He went down, however, on an ant's nest and was instead attacked by them. Slightly different kind of treatment there. Over in Asia, I believe, and we've got the unluckiest sequence of events I've ever seen where one team has managed to hit the woodwork four times in the space of five minutes. Icelandic fourth division side an Icelandic 4th Division side welcomed a crowd this week for the first time in the form of drive-in supporters who were able to park up in their cars next to the pitch and watch from the comfort of their vehicles. There were absolute scenes over at Lemington, not Leamington, I've got the pronunciation correct this time, where having been 3-0 down, they completed the comeback to end all comebacks and won 4-3 in the end. And finally, a massive football manager fan managed to persuade his wife to go to Bulgaria for their honeymoon so that he could watch a second division side called Nezabar who he'd managed on the game. The divorce papers are currently being finalised. But that is going to be it for football this week and I hope you have enjoyed. If you have then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at the official FNG on Twitter and on Insta. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.